so good evening everyone uh, <clears throat> sorry for not uh, being in a match because uh, my bail conditions do not permit me to travel beyond maharashtra and goa uh, most of people might be knowing about my background i am uh, one of the big sx team so hey uh, well uh, my topic is descent privacy and state something like that and everybody knows what is descent descent is a vital component of democratic societies enabling the questioning of power and the pursuit of social justice uh, however states often suffer state do not like descent you know to maintain control it's not only uh, confined to india world over descent is not liked by the states <clears throat> and privacy as you know privacy in simple term probably is uh, the right of people to be left alone privacy uh, is sacrosanct because it underpins fundamental human rights protects against abuses of power ensures psychological well-being maintains social integrity and upholds legal and ethical standards <clears throat> uh there is a very intimate connection with privacy privacy and dissent are codependent dissent can only exist where privacy does and privacy is what gives dissent its protection a privacy on the other hand could exist where dissent is possible <laughs> what has happened uh to the dis to dissent whenever such questions actually are invoked <clears throat> we go to constitution and find that we have all these rights uh, enshrined in the constitution that we have free speech uh, there is a plethora of rights that have been given but we do not understand <clears throat> uh, that the constitution actually imposes lot many restrictions too none other than baba saheb ambedkar you know uh, defended these rest uh, restrictions and justified them he was uh, <laughs> uh he was a actually defender of something like uh <clears throat> these restrictions against free, free kind of speech um, he was influenced by the american case you know when uh, the, uh, the subject was discussed in the constituent assembly ambedkar in law in whole the git law was a state of new york judgment wherein the the supreme court of the us said that the rights are not absolute that the state ultimately has something like something what is called police power and under that rights get restricted the free speech is not an absolute and it gets restricted to that <clears throat> uh, one of the vocal uh, member of the constituent assembly professor kt shah said that all these rights particularly speech free speech etc has been given by the right hand and it has been taken away by one two three four and five left hands so such were the comments even one another uh, constituent assembly member somnath lahiri also had commented upon the arbitrary definition of the security you know there are a lot of such restrictions imposed uh, on these uh, <coughs> rights like uh, sovereign under the sovereignty of uh, an integrity of nation national security then foreign uh, relations with the foreign countries defamation and contempt of law decency and morality etc uh, etc et so then <clears throat> effectively what happens is the state has used these restrictions whatever founding fathers might have meant but the subsequent successive governments have used this to the hilt and denied people their rights fundamental rights so called privacy uh, also is a kind of uh, you know uh, <clears throat> like to restrict the dissent the surveillance comes in because less this dissent becomes something like a collective phenomena and gets a uh, um, coinage in society state would be interested to curb the dissent and for that they created the surveillance infrastructure surveillance infrastructure uh, everybody knows what the uh, state surveillance infrastructure is there is a lot of something like an ib and ro and things like that and there is a network of police informers 
uh, <clears throat> in the society, which actually keeps on uh, surveilling some people who are uh, personal non data to state or person the uh, state would like to have surveillance on. <clears throat> the surveillance thing has really uh, aggravated uh, with the advent of IT information technology, in particularly internet. When the world was the world started getting networked, it became very very difficult to kind of resist these uh, surveillance attacks. When I happened to be uh, IT head of my company uh, then, and almost was one of the evangelists actually for in information technology. Uh, <clears throat> we were. Uh, there are a lot many pluses. Obviously, there were many pluses with this technology, but we were even aware that what a rogue kind of politicians could do with this, or even the rogue of, uh, of different kind also could use it, misuse it for their uh, for their purpose. So now you see uh, what kind of surveillance that can be exercised by this thing to. to the thing has come to the fore that almost none is safe here. Everybody is almost uh, <clears throat> surveilled very intimately. You are naked before the state, and state is opaque to us. The state would not reveal anything, but the, every individual or all public is naked before the state. You have, you know, Aadhaar, uh, which actually came with the garb of something like doing social justice to people, transferring funds, etc to their account directly and in eliminating middlemen. But it is now became something like an additional burden and uh, some, uh, <coughs> something like um, a surveilling tool on the people. You are, uh, all kinds of data is with the state. And there are leakages to this data, the other data. There are reports that are being sold in the market for as low as $500. So this became a, so is sort of pervasive that it becomes worrisome now that we <clears throat> are we do not have any privacy left. Uh, there are uh, uh, in, everybody knows the architecture. Probably the people have uh, idea at least. You don't have to know uh, architecture of internet and everything. But there are something like the subsea cables, data cables, OFCs, we call and they carry a huge amount of data. And there are tools, there have been plethora of tools like Tempura who actually uh, <clears throat> can uh, tap into these cables and collect a huge data in, one, in, in chunks. And this is going on for now years. Uh, there are something like, uh, 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 there are other tools which actually uh, track even data flows, international data flows. And it, <clears throat> something like one uh, time in, within a month, something like 97 billion pieces of data were stolen. India star is actually doing all these kinds of things and India ranks almost fifth in the world in data collection. It had within 20 days, those days when it was actually monit being monitored, it had collected 6 billion pieces of data on Indians. <clears throat> So in one way, you know, the, the uh, attack on dissent has been built in into the constitution right from the constitution itself, not many are aware of. And another way, the surveillance also started getting built <coughs> and got uh, uh, kind of accentuated uh, with the technology. So both ways, people are pleased. There is absolutely no dissent, people, uh, the states have created the uh, complement of uh, draconian laws. There are plenty of them. There are hundreds of them, but the prominent ones that we know of, UAPA, APSA in Northeast uh, uh, being used, public safety acts and various special power, uh, special public, uh, 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 public security acts uh, <clears throat> enacted by the states. Maharashtra recently was uh, proposing to enact a state and the uh, uh, chief minister when the, the <clears throat> it was pro the bill was presented when the uh, assembly was coming to an end and then the chief minister actually said oh, the deputy chief minister said that they would bring an ordinance that such is the hurry and such is the important being 
given to this kind of uh, architecture. So today you do know that uh, like last 10 years we have been facing this uh, kinds of uh, things. But surveillance as it connotes, you know, surveillance is not uh, meant to surveil such people who are actually suspect or surveillance is not something like to catch their uh, suspicious activity or conspiratorial um, <clears throat> actions. But the, these very tools can be used by the state to incriminate them. They can primarily kind of pre-select people to incriminate and incarcerate them. There are spyways and plethora of malwares which actually could be used to plan documents, etc., and they become an easy evidence. Whether they stand in courts of law or not, but you you are uh, you must be aware that the bails get repeatedly denied in the course of law. So even the Supreme Court denies the bail to a UAPA accused. <clears throat> this has been happening. And there have been so many cases of uh, <clears throat> such kind of dissent, many uh, uh, well-meaning journalists, well-meaning public intellectuals, uh, <clears throat> uh, lawyers, uh, uh, and activists uh, have been, are in jail today. So this is the fate of uh, uh, dissent in India, and we are uh, in a, in that sense living in a very very worrisome times. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, I would end here and uh, look for your uh, questions. That would be better. Thank you, Anand. Okay, I think this is a good time. Uh, is this mic working? Okay. Yeah, I think this is a good time to open for questions. We'll keep it super brief because we're cognizant of the time. Um, okay, we have some. Can we start with you, please? Long press on the... Thank you. Uh, my question is for uh, Smriti. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of uh, the work Why Loiter and uh, something we studied in college as well. And um, recently, last year, in fact, Karnataka government had come out with their Shakti scheme, which allowed women to travel freely in buses. And one of the consequences of that, which I think even they weren't expecting, was how women used that to loiter and even increase economic activity within the state, right? And so all of a sudden, there were reports of women just going around with their friends, visiting temples or waterfalls and sites that they would have never seen without the presence of a male family member. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, are there similar policy interventions that come to mind that have had these kind of effects on a woman's agency to loiter? Thanks for that. Yeah, I think there are others, right? Delhi has a similar policy of allowing uh, women free DTC travel on bus. In Himachal, where I come from, on Raksha Bandhan, only women are allowed to travel for free. So that's not really loitering because it's kind of purpose driven to get protected by their brothers. But uh, <laughs> but really, yeah, I think it is ideas like these of uh, creating spaces. There are movements like Reclaim the Night, which usually happen of course, in response to sad incidents. But again, there, I, I think I wanted to give this example earlier and I miss giving it, but, you know, the report which was out from The Wire a few days back about the, you know, this Reclaim the Night protest around uh, organized in Mumbai outside the Hiranandadi, a posh complex. And when people from the neighboring slum, other women wanted to be a part of it, uh, you know, they were excluded. So there is, it's also important to realize while these interventions are interesting and important, there is always this hierarchy and, uh, you know, uh, but I'm digressing from your question, but uh, to, to answer your question, yeah, I think the state has tried to make some of these interventions. Of course, one can be skeptical and say it, it is, of course, political in that sense, but, but it does help uh, increase agency for women when such interventions happen. Another question coming in from this side of the room. Can we have just that in front of you? The one in the back?
Hi, uh, my question is to Smriti. So you have talked about claiming or reclaiming the public spaces to loiter, and uh, people are also very willing to give up the privacy in the public space by you know uh, uh, giving consent to the governments or the police to establish you know install okay, CCTV cameras and use of facial recognition technology and other kind of technology. Uh, and they have even uh, popular support to the police and other amendments for like public safety amendment in Hyderabad after uh, you know bomb blast and everything. But on the other hand, uh, this law or these amendments have been misused by the same police and the same government. Where uh, the, you might have heard of Operation Chabutra in Hyderabad, where the south, the, the south zone, South Delhi, uh, South uh, Hyderabad, uh, people sitting outside their house, the Chabutra, the area where they can sit, they have been picked up, they have been detained, and some even arrested. They are mostly teenagers, so, right? Just hanging out with their friends. So yet people are still willing, except for the people who are being su who are suffering, or the you know people affected by that. Uh, which are mostly the marginalized community and the minorities. Except for that, it, there seems to be a very uh, blanket consent given and blanket, you know, acceptance to this abuse of power and violation of privacy just for the sake of, uh, you know, uh, security in the public space. This is mostly coming from the privileged community. So, how do we begin to understand this? Because it, it's very blatant abuse of power, and yet the majority of the community, even the educated people, seems to be fine with it. I think that's very true and it is only when you are at the receiving end of a technology like this, the negative receiving end that you know you realize its consequences and unfortunately the way society is structured most of us who believe in the security potential of these technologies are never at the receiving end of it right so it would happen when mission creep happens when today people want you know cctvs in schools because they think it's protecting their children but when tomorrow their children go into protests uh, you know they go into demonstrations and that same cctv footage is used for facial recognition and those kids are hauled up not getting college admissions i think only when those incidents happen where the privileged and the elite are affected by it will we kind of realize similarly with aadhaar right we only rose up to it when we were asked to do kyc for bank accounts like nobody except you know very few people were talking and working on it uh, uh, before that when it was about welfare and it was about benefits when it was about kyc and we were affected you know that's when the realization dawned on everyone um, okay, for the next question, I'm going to put a caveat. Um, because you can discuss with Smithy and Mihir outside if time runs out. If anyone has a question for Anand, we'll take that. Um, okay, we couldn't get to you earlier in the early session, so now please. Um, can we hand a mic to him, please? Make sure he can hear you. Hello. Uh, hello, sir. My question is to you. Uh, a very material example that we saw of this debate between security and uh, privacy and uh, was uh, earlier this year when the government of India was planning to ban proton mail, which is the holy grail of privacy lovers like me. The reason, however, for the ban was that some mails were sent to some public school, wherein the uh, wherein a threat to bomb the school uh, were sent via the mail. And uh, the thing is, to, since it was sent from proton mail, there was no way to track who was the sender. And therefore, the police was not able to track who was the person who caused the panic by sending the bomb threats. And there have been examples of using Proton Mail or other such privacy-friendly tools to engage in activities such as cyber stalking or such as uh, maybe even uh, some other mischievous activities that affect the public at large. So, at what point do we, uh, how do we make the distinction between using privacy tools as a uh, as a uh, empowering tool for dissent and how uh, and how do we uh, make a crackdown on people who are actually using it for mischievous or even illegal activities that harm the public uh, there is no way to differentiate that but uh, as far as state is concerned even such kind of uh, signal or uh, proton mails etc being used by people are being cited by the police, you know, that the, these, these people uh, are indulging into something like an nefarious act, activities and they are getting something. And, and uh, cause if they are, you know, they do hardly have any kind of understanding of this information technology, etc. And they get mislaid uh, and prejudiced against the uh, subject, you know. There is no way, uh, these are just the tools to what use you put it to is your concern, you know. So they it should not be excessive alarm uh, created about these kinds of things. 
Yes, it might be definitely used by some such uh, criminal activities, etc. But that needs to be tolerated. There could there could be other ways around to catch them. You know that. But it's not that just because this gate something like. Uh, used for uh, keeping uh, or safeguarding your privacy, so you incriminate them or something like it, ban them. It happened with, you know, you might be knowing that BlackBerry Messenger. So that time also uh, the Indian government actually uh, raised the issue that it is the, the, it, the BlackBerry refused. It was not possible for BlackBerry really to uh, uh, give the metadata also about the users. So that was the thing. And uh, uh, anyway, BlackBerry is passed now. <clears throat> so I don't think, it, uh, uh, if you are asking me something like how to distinguish, etc., there could, could be ways of distinguishing these things. So what use people are putting these tools to? Thank you for the question and the answer. Both. I'm really sorry. I'm looking at the clock and it's looking scary to me personally. Um, I will encourage you to propose your questions to Mihir and uh, Smithy outside when you're saying your goodbyes. And I'm not going to say goodbye myself. I'm going to call upon my uh, our executive director at IFF, Mr. Pratik Vagri, to say that for me. Thank you. And I'm not going to take a lot of time because, well, we're over time and I don't know whether this qualifies as loitering or not, but I think the, the venue may not be very happy with us. I, I want to start with a small, small disclosure, right? A small number. And I think people who follow IFF know we, we, we try to do this. We try to be transparent. In fact, the term we use is radically transparent uh, wherever we can. So, uh, and, you know, and this is coupled with, with the thanks to everyone here. Uh, so across, across different heads, like, you know, the, the venue, the art, uh, transportation for people. Uh, today on this event, uh, IFF has spent some. My my math is not 100% exact, but somewhere in the range of 150 to 155 thousand. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for that. I want to thank our community because the reason we're able to do stuff like this is because you support us, uh, literally support us. Uh, so you know, first please give yourselves a big round, uh, a big applause, round of applause uh, for supporting us and for actually staying here. Uh, I also want to thank thank all of our speakers. Uh, Justice Mullidhar, who of course is, uh, you know, has had to go for another engagement. Uh, Ambar, Shifali, Nikhil, uh, Mihir, Priti, and Anand sir, thank you very much uh, for your fascinating and, you know, really incredible insight today. I had actually planned uh, to end today with a slight provocation to, you know, give 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 all of us something to think about. But I think you all have given us so much to think about already that I'm not I'm not even going to try that. Uh, and lastly, and finally. Uh, I just want to thank uh, the IFF team uh, who've been uh, working very hard to put this event together over the last few weeks while wrestling with the broadcasting bill, wrestling with court cases. So please give them uh, you know, a, a round of applause as well because I've been sitting and just watching them uh, do all the work. I get to take some of the credit. Thank you very much. Uh, but but you know, please, uh, th thanks to all of you as well. And again, thank you again for coming. Uh, and we hope to see you again at Privacy Supreme next year.